What is going on, friends? Sean Don coming back with a, a technical analysis this fine Monday morning. Here we have Tage Bryant, the newest member of the Grip and Rip Throws Squad. Uh, fun fact, uh, I mean, outside of me doing online coaching for Tage, uh, I'm also going to be working with him in person. He's here in Phoenix, Arizona, so I'm going to be coaching him in person. And I'm really excited for that because coaching in person is way easier than online coaching. It's much more direct. I can demonstrate and talk through things a little bit easier. And so, yeah, Tage himself is a 70-meter hammer thrower, and I think he's got a lot of potential. I've seen him training for a couple of years now at least. Um, and, yeah, stoked, stoked to help him out. So let's get after it. If you yourself are looking for any sort of online coaching, or if you're in the Phoenix area and you want some in-person coaching, that'd be dope too. Uh, but go check out my website, gripandrip.co, and sign up for some online coaching. If you are interested in in-person coaching, then shoot me a message on Instagram at sdthrows, or go to my contact page on gripandrip.co, and let's talk. Let's see what we can work out, because the in-person coaching stuff's, I think, a lot more fun. Than online coaching. Online coaching also fun. You get to see results, but in-person coaching, man, uh, it's just, just so much easier. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Um, so yeah, Tage, uh, I asked you to send me a few different videos, some good, some bad, and this was, I mean, outside of just like the best quality video in terms of literal video quality, I, I think um, through all the uh, text transfer and email transfer to get it down to my computer, um, this was also, I think, a pretty solid-looking throw. It's a 6K, uh, good, easy feeling, pretty solid, pretty consistent. Um, a lot of the other stuff you sent me, like the 5K and the 10K, looked pretty good. I uh, thought about doing the 14, but the 14 was, uh, it was probably the worst looking of all the, th all the things you sent me. Um, but I think I want to I wanna review something good and, and see what we can improve on from here. Uh, and then obviously when we're working together in person, it's going to be fun to try to communicate these things and work out these issues um, directly so that's cool so easy 6k throw I took a few good uh, looks at it so let's let's uh, start breaking it down um, but you start very open and you're a lefty so pardon me if I get some things mixed up but I have done more coaching with the lefties lately so my uh, vernacular should get a little bit better but you're open I'm still gonna use 90 is your uh, where you're facing currently in this video so 90 everything's gonna be the same zero 90 270 180 all right um and then i just i'm probably gonna mess up saying your left and your right and all that stuff but so you open and you're facing the left very well you're facing 90 very well in the ones um and you can see like i said you're just you're, you're very open which is good should help for the connection you're uh you're getting the ball uh and connecting with it pretty early because you are so open here, which is a good thing. Um, and then as you come through into the second wind, camera shaking a good bit because the cameraman, but you are staying open. You're stepping out to your left, getting the hands up, getting the ball up, getting some extension through the hips and low back, countering the ball pretty well. It looks like you're loading that left leg pretty well. And then opening and connecting really early. And then you're setting up. You're getting, it looks like you're getting a good sling, a good push off the second wind. Um, as you can see, you're loading that right side more now. And then it's pretty stable through entry. You can see you're turning with the ball pretty well. Turning with the ball very well. You can see this right side. Uh, and one thing about PVCC that you're throwing at right now is I always find it hard to find like 180, find direction. It's just, I find it a hard circle to throw in. Um, but I'm assuming you're starting at uh, right foot at zero. Right side stability as the ball goes through zero is pretty good. Shoulder, knee, toe. You can see, I think, because maybe you are so open, it looks like you kind of uh, lead the ball a little bit. Or like it, it's hard to kind of turn that uh, left leg with it so much when you are kind of so uh, open and uh, towards, towards 90 in the winds. Um, towards your right side or in terms of you as a thrower camera view i don't know left side of the center whatever it doesn't matter but um as i see you go through zero like i said right side's pretty stable this is a 6k it should be easier to find stability with the lighter balls for sure 
Uh, it's just a matter of turning with the ball and staying connected. Um, and it looks like that right side is with the ball pretty well, a little bit maybe ahead of it. And you can see this left leg um, is a little bit behind, sort of. Um, once again, maybe it's because of how you start and your starting position. But that left leg's a little, or sorry, right leg's a little bit behind. No, that's your left leg. Okay, sorry, your left leg. Camera view, right leg. Your left leg's a little bit behind. Um, and then you can see you lead just a little tiny bit with your right side as the ball goes around the left. Um, but you do see that left leg come off pretty well. Uh, maybe get a little bit more involved with that left leg as the ball goes through zero. Uh, and this, the thing that I see, uh, I think, a lot in your throws is this. You have the tendency to rise up here um, through that left leg kind of extending up. And it's very subtle. It's not uh, super detrimental. I think it's pretty ingrained in your technique. So maybe we can see if we can work that out. I wouldn't call it a bad habit, but I don't know if I'd call it a good habit either. But you do extend up a little bit. Um, and then you're nice and long with the upper body. And you see this uh, right leg, sorry, left leg start to come around. Uh, and you see you kind of have this, uh, it's a very low kind of uh, step around. As you can see, your feet are pretty much right next to each other. Could maybe get a little bit more knee flexion, hip flexion, knee up, a skip sort of position with this left leg. Um, might help uh, help you out a little bit because I think what I see is, like I said, this uh, right leg kind of extends up and then this left leg kind of comes low around to down, kind of low around that foot. And then you catch, and like you catch nice and early because you're nice and long, which is good. Um, and then you come down kind of heel catch on that uh, left leg. But I think if we could get this right knee to drop a little bit more forwards towards 180 in this uh, single support, you'd be find a little bit better direction. Um, did I say that right? Right knee kind of drops to 180. All right, that gives you a little bit more direction in this uh, first single support. Then you catch, you have a little bit more direction towards the sector where like this looks just a little tiny bit rotational right uh, here as you go to catch your feet almost come around and they are um, pretty much square to each other i'd like to see that uh, left leg have a little bit more uh, direction into this sector uh, so this left foot a little bit closer to the front of the circle um, gives you a little bit better direction where i think your throw to me looks a little bit rotational and i think it's part of it is just uh lefties dude it's just weird watching lefties throw if i over you know half the time when i review lefty video i switch it to righty view just because i something about the brain processing i think just makes it a little bit easier um but yeah just a little bit over rotational not even over rotational just perfectly rotational like you come and your feet are like i said are pretty much square um but i think a little bit more direction that first turn would help you find some tension and all that stuff and maybe a better catch position uh but as you go through this uh, second turn, you can see you can see, you see your uh, head start to peak to the right. Uh, what is going on right now? Sorry, I had to pause the video. We had some uh, technical difficulties going on. Um, but yeah, as you come through, you can see your head start to peak to the right a little bit. Your right towards 270, you start to peak and lead the ball a little bit. Um, and you can see as you're going through double support, you're turning with the ball pretty well, but up until right here, see this, then you start to see that right side take over. All right. So that head's peeking to the right, your right shoulder, right side in general is kind of opening up ahead of the ball, especially if you look at that right foot, that's your left foot. I'm, I'm really getting messed up by the, uh, lefty terminology, but this is going to be one good thing about us working together in person. I can fix that very quickly. I'm sure it'll be a quick adaptation, but you can see your yeah, no, that is your right side. I am doing this right. Okay, so you see your right leg, foot, knee, hip, everything kind of opening up ahead of the ball, especially this position right here. So we got to find a little bit more stability in this right side in this second turn. It, gotta, it has to be more similar to the entry where you keep this side stable, closed for the most part, because like you're opening a little bit early. Uh, and you can just see that right side just opening back. You see this left foot, right foot, sorry, um, kind of reach open towards 180 and you see that uh, most of this movement in the second turn is coming from your right side and then your left side's kind of disconnected a little bit. You can see this left knee back towards zero, left foot back towards zero um, and just not 
quite with the ball, and you also see this kind of uh, right leg extending backwards, pushing that hip backwards. Uh, so we can work on posture a little bit. But you're still getting the ball pretty long left. So like your upper body is pretty long, which is good. That's kind of the savior of uh, if you have this issue with the lower body. The long upper body can kind of help you salvage it. And like I said, you can see as you come off in this uh, end of this double support, you can see that left leg coming off a little bit late. Not late, but rather plantar flex. It's just not quite connected. Like I said, that, that uh, left hip should kind of be the driver of the throw for you. If you're right-handed, it would be the right hip, uh, but left-handers, it's the left hip because it's the opposite. But see that left leg come off a little bit, plantar flexed a little bit, low, lazy, same sort of thing. You kind of get this extension through this right leg right here. Boom. You can see that knee push back, pushes the hip back, and then the left leg kind of comes around once again, kind of a little bit lazy. Uh, I think, like I said, a little bit more knee up, hip flexion um, will give you a little bit more tension and pressure into the next turn where like when I see this I see yourself you start to get pulled around your hips kind of come down around this uh, right side axis kind of get pulled around a little bit but since you're long and relaxed catch and you do look like your chest is down a little bit your hips are back a little bit so we could focus on posture a little bit like I said um, you do gain a little bit of uh, ground with this uh, Right foot looks like, like I said, probably about the same as the last turn. Like you're not totally over rotating, but you're not gaining that amplitude towards the sector, uh, at least in terms of the body. When I look at um, the body, and I do say it is a little bit over rotational, um, people talk about amplitude towards the sector with the ball. I think this is an indicator of amplitude towards the sector with the body. Are you getting that, uh, that step foot uh, in the direction of the sector a little bit more than the axis foot? So Catch, like I said, hips are back a little bit, chest is down a little bit. You can't really see the ball, you can't really see the orbit, unfortunately, because of this video, but that's fine. Um, but like I said, it just looks a little bit over rotational. Uh, it needs to be a little bit more linear, a little bit more front to back, and we can work on that. Uh, but you catch, and then as you come through, that left heel grounds pretty early. You can see that head peeking to the right as well, towards 270. Um, and you start to see a little bit of shift back in this right side before the ball gets to sector and you can see you're kind of really coming across the body kind of almost pulling um the ball through instead of being stable and letting the ball whoosh so like you're doing more or less the right thing it's just the ball needs to be a little bit more ahead before you go to kind of hit the hammer or work the hammer or strike back on the hammer it has to get in between your knees a little bit more where you can see it's kind of over this left leg a little bit too much and you see this right side kind of pulling across and you can see almost the left arm or sorry right arm kind of coming across the body um, and you're turning with the ball better here but you still see a little bit of that right side uh, coming across the body left right arm and then also right uh, leg kind of opening up early kind of reaching that left toe towards 180 and your left leg is with it better here but by this point like I said it, it does look like a little bit pulley um, and then with that, like I said, that right side is kind of the driver of the throw. You're kind of pulling the ball through, which is fine. We can work with that. We just got to do a better job of getting the ball ahead of you, letting the ball get free, pulling correctly rather than pulling incorrectly or dragging. Um, and you see this left leg kind of come off once again a little late. Um, plantar flex not totally connected. And then as you go through, you can see this left leg start to kind of get wide around the left once again so that's a big thing i want to work on is kind of that knee up a skip sort of position if you can get this left knee up and get this right or left knee up over that uh left foot up over the right calf that'll tidy up this single support position make it a little bit more uh linear instead of rotational because like i said i want to see this uh left leg come low around that right foot that usually means the throw is a little bit more rotational than it needs to be. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. As we get into the next turn, now you actually over-rotate, but you're still long and relaxed. And based on, like I so said, you can't really see the position of the ball when you catch, but this is a later catch than you had in the previous two turns. Uh, you start to over-rotate, and you start to see this kind of uh, disconnect between the right foot and the left foot. Uh, once again, posture is not bad. Like, it's a 6K. You shouldn't be getting pulled forward that much. You're strong enough to uh, handle that. But hips are a little bit back. You do over-rotate a little bit. And because of this over-rotation, this right side is going to pull even more here. Now you can see you're really kind of starting to drag the ball through. Um, and you kind of get the same thing where you get this extension up through this right leg. Uh, the left right side is really kind of pulling across here. You can see it in this position right here. That head's peaking. 
and you're kind of coming across the body with the uh, with the right arm. Maybe get that left arm a little bit straighter, get the ball more square to your upper body. So that's uh, something we're definitely going to work on. But um, yeah, you just see that right side leading a little bit, left side a little bit behind. Same sort of thing. Low left leg, need to get more hip flexion, uh, knee up sort of position because you're just kind of pulling the ball around. And then when you go to catch, this is your latest catch of the throw. So honestly, like your first two catches looked pretty deep, and then you can see it starts to get um, more and more shallow as the last two turns progress. Um, and it kind of should be the opposite. If anything, I want to see how deep you catch the ball. It should be growing each turn. So I'd rather see you catch the first turn at, you know, nine, in, like I said, in your position, 90, and then each turn you should get deeper and deeper. Uh, ideally, it's not always going to be perfect. Uh, I know for uh, for a fact I used to catch the first turn pretty deep, second turn a little bit more shallow, but then three, four would get deeper, so a little bit um, arrhythmic. But uh, everybody has their little own idiosyncrasies and stuff. So, um, but you catch, like I said, right foot or left foot come, comes down, ball is just after 270, and since it's a six k, you're strong enough to uh, and just kind of how the, the system of the throw is set up, that right side is going to pull. You're going to get. You extend up, out, and you finish out into the ball pretty well. Like, you're pretty balanced on the finish, um, especially considering how things looked in those last two catches. Um, and you're able to extend up, out, into the ball pretty well. And you can see you almost kind of uh, extend a little bit too early. But you can still see that that left foot isn't quite totally connected, so it's not really turning all the way through and getting through it. Uh, it is pushing and extending up, but you can see there's a little break in the heel and the knee. It's not quite... Uh, turned with the ball but you're getting out um, and finishing out into the sector pretty well looks like you're throwing like straight down the middle of the sector so um, yeah I, I'm not sure I'm going to really do an entire run through once again uh, because you know I'm about to go talk to you in a couple hours and coach you up but um, yeah so you can just kind of see the issue is that like I said it's kind of the entry uh, you kind of extend up through this right leg that left leg uh, like I said we can work on that single support movement with the left leg um, and get it a little bit tidier get a little bit more direction and, and linear aspect to your throw, some pendulum, that sort of thing. Um, because right now, like I said, it just looks a little bit rotational. And when you are rotational um, or, or too rotational, you tend to see this, which is like I said, that right side kind of takes over. And then it's just, a, it's a very rotational throw. I think we need to get a little bit more linear in your throw. Um, especially as the throw goes on, you can see you're really kind of pulling across and dragging almost. So if we can get that ball more ahead, get you to feel some more push, or some whoosh, uh, get you some more patience, you're going to feel a lot more linear. It's going to feel a lot easier. Um, and hopefully you throw farther. And I mean, that's, of course, the goal. That's why I want to work with you. So, yeah, man, um, obviously, we're going to have a chat later. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, if anybody else out there would like some online coaching, then go to my website, gripandrip.co, and sign up, dude. Indoor season is pretty much over. Uh, if you made nationals, you're competing this weekend. And if you uh, didn't, you're already outdoors. So if you want to make some good hammer gains this season, go to my website, sign up for online coaching, sign up for an in-depth technical analysis. Like now is the time. It's March. You can get some feedback and then you can make some changes. And then those changes will ingrain themselves by April, by the end of April. And then you'll start dropping PRs and throwing big bombs at your conference championships and national championships and stuff so go check out my website gripandrip.co all right love you guys see you until next time sean don signing off